Today, we're gonna turn this 3D printed frame into a colorful stained glass effect sun catcher. I just got my new Ender 5 3D printer set up and I wanted to break it in with a really simple project. I haven't done anything like stained glass before, so I started off by googling some images just to get some ideas. Scrolling through all these results, it got me thinking just how many possibilities there are to go with this project. I decided to do the first test by trying to replicate this sun and moon design. Next, I pasted the image into my vector illustration program. I personally like to use Adobe Flash for all of my vector drawing. It's now known as Adobe Animate, and it's part of the Adobe Creative Cloud. I put the photo in the first layer, and then locked the first layer so the photo can't be moved. I'll be doing my vector tracing in the second layer on top of the photo layer. I started by drawing a simple circle as the border of the suncatcher, and then continued tracing using the line tool. Make sure your vector line stroke is as thick as you want your frame to be. I love using Animate's basic drawing tools because I find them a bit more intuitive and tactile, compared to using something like the Illustrator pen tool. For example, here I'm just drawing the straight lines and then dragging their centers to create the curves. With the snapping function on, the lines almost magnetically click together so you know when you've got properly connected line strokes. Once the frame's design is completed, you can convert the vector line strokes into vector fills. Or, if you're using Illustrator, there's an option called Outline Stroke. This will convert the line data that's only a single pixel wide into a combined flattened object that we can then use to make the 3D model. In my case, I'm going to export the final design into an FXG file and then use a program like Illustrator to convert that FXG into a DXF file. Once you've got your DXF file to scale, I'm using millimeters, you can then import the DXF into a program like Autodesk Fusion 360 to extrude the Suncatcher's frame into three dimensions. Here, I'm gonna do the first test with a four millimeter height. Export the final model as an STL file and remember to set your infill to 100%. Now it's time to print. The Ender 5 isn't a perfect printer by any means, but I really like the fact that the print bed platform doesn't move on the Y axis while the object is printing. I've noticed that sometimes on other printers when the print bed oscillates back and forth too much, there's a bit more potential for things like vibration and skip steps to happen, which can cause lower quality prints, especially if it's a large print that gets heavy. Because I was trying to print as large as I could, I had a little trouble getting the first few layers to stick down, but eventually it fixed itself. Overall, I think it printed really well. If your design has a lot of delicate detail, maybe let it cool down for a bit before trying to peel it off carefully. I glued down the frame to some wax paper using Elmer's clear glue. The purpose of this is to hopefully prevent any leaks from the different colored resins. You could also use something like clear packing tape to seal up the back side of the frame and once all the resin is poured and cured, just peel off the tape. To manage the different resin colors, I'll be using these disposable plastic shot glasses. These little syringes will help to scoop up the resin and inject it into the small detail cells of the suncatcher frame. For the filler, I'll be using this two-part art resin. These bottles may look small, but a little goes a long way and it's non-toxic and BPA-free. Now before you think I'm crazy, hear me out. 
I'm going to use acrylic paints as pigments for the resin. Normally, this is a bad idea because acrylic paints are water-based, and this affects the integrity of the resin as it cures. But for this project, it actually turned out to be a blessing in disguise, and I didn't have to buy a bunch of expensive pigments. Here, I'm going to use some syringes to help me measure out the volumes. I'm pouring out the resin and hardener into some cups for easier access with the syringes. This art resin has a one-to-one -one mixing ratio, meaning one part resin to an equal part hardener. I'm going to start with filling the blue colored cells. You only need a tiny bit of paint to dye the resin because we want to keep it somewhat translucent. I added both resin parts to the paint in the cup and started mixing. You can see here how I added a little bit too much paint and the resin is already pretty opaque but we're gonna go for it anyway. The paint mixes into the resin really well, and it actually makes the resin less viscous and more runny. This runniness actually made it easier to suction it up into the syringes. I started experimenting by carefully pouring directly into one of the larger cells. I used a popsicle stick to help control the pour. Dabbing into the cell multiple times seemed to work pretty well with controlling the amount poured in. You can see that the seal isn't perfect and I'm starting to get leaks into neighboring cells. I think this may be due to the print slightly warping as it cooled down. I placed a weight onto the frame to keep it as flat as possible. Luckily the resin thickens just enough in a few minutes that the leaks aren't that big of a deal. It's interesting how the resin hugs the walls of the frame and forms sort of a curved-in meniscus effect. Q-tips were really helpful with wiping up and absorbing any accidental drops. Another benefit of using the syringe is if you pour too much resin into a cell, you can just suction it back out. I had some blue resin left over from the last pour, and I thought it would be a cool idea to create some sort of marbling effect using different shades of blue. I added a little light blue paint to the resin, and then just sort of dabbed it in here and there to almost make it look like a galaxy. I randomly swirled around the highlights to complete the marbling effect. Once the blues were finished, I repeated the same processes for the other colors. If I were to start this project over again, next time I would start by filling all of the cells with clear resin first and then let that cure for a few hours before adding the color tinted resins. This first clear layer of resin would seal up each individual cell and there would be no leaks to have to clean up and deal with. I also noticed that using paint as a pigment significantly increased the curing time, maybe even by about 12 hours. In the end, it still cured rock hard, with the only side effect being that maybe the resin is a little bit more flexible. I think it turned out pretty good for a first attempt. 
I kind of like how the marbling effect almost makes it look like that old style cathedral stained glass. Next time I would definitely add a bit less paint to make the cells more translucent. Make sure to leave a like and a comment and let us know your thoughts on any ways that we might be able to improve this project. 3D printing opens up so many possibilities with what you can do with this. You could try using glow-in-the-dark pigments, or even fill the cells with melted crayons. It got me thinking, why not make a dynamic version with moving parts? I'm going to try something where these hummingbirds bounce around the flowers in the wind. You can see on this version that I filled the cells with clear resin first. To finish it off, I added some stainless steel wire to hang the birds from, a chain, and that's it. It's ready to hang up. Got any ideas for any other configurations? Let us know what you think in the comments, and let's see how many different ideas we can come up with. Thanks so much for watching today and you can help us grow our channel by clicking the subscribe button below. You can find links to the 3D printer and all the supplies used in this video in the description. And feel free to play around with any of the graphic files or 3D models available for free download. Stay safe and have a great summer.